Good morning, my fellow Tottenham fans, and welcome back to the Irish Hotspur with your boy, Big Dave, and happy Tuesday morning to you all. A big game coming up tomorrow night as we take on Brentford. Please let me know in the comment section how you're feeling heading into that game, and also, will you be taking a part in the light display that Tottenham have organised beforehand? Let me know your thoughts on that as well. I see a lot of sort of uh, different opinions floating around social media on it. So, guys, please do let me know. Personally, I have no problem with it whatsoever. I actually think it's a cool sort of fun little gimmick. I would I would rather that we sort of put a song together like Arsenal have that North London forever, something like that, that would stir the emotions, you know, a bit of tribalism sort of before the game. You know, we've got plenty of great uh, musicians out there. We've got James Black. We've got Spurs song sheet as well. One of them you could put out there. Personally, I think it's the wrong timing, especially after going out the FA Cup. But I do not mind the initiative. Are they getting everyone to download the app? Because that's basically what you have to do. You have to download the app to engage in it. Are they getting everyone to download the app? Maybe preempting that there's a signing coming in here deadline day. Just a little thought. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. But the reason why I have you all here today is to give you an update of everything that's going on around the academy. And I do think it's very, very important because we've got a homegrown quarter in the squad that needs to be filled. It's one of the weakest in the Premier League. You're not going to do it all by making signings. So some of them will have to be filtered through the academy. So basically what I'm here to do is let you know how they're getting on and what players that we should be keeping an eye on and developing in for the future first team. Not a lot going on uh, over the last week, but I will bring up what has gone on and we'll go through it. So please give me your thoughts on it in the comment section below. And if you do like these, please smash the like button. So we will start with two contract renewals. We had two last week. And we have another two this week. And the first one is Herbie James signs a new deal. Herbie James is someone that we brought in from the Man City Academy last summer. And here's what the club announcement had to say. We are delighted to announce that Herbie James has signed his first professional contract with the club. Born in Macclesfield, Herbie was previously in Manchester City's academy. He joined us as a full-time scholar last summer and has featured in the Under-18 Premier League, the Under-18 Premier League Cup and the FAU Cup uh, for us so far this season. The 17-year-old primarily plays as a winger but can also operate as a striker and his preferred side is the right-hand side as well. Not having a bad campaign for the under-18s this season. Of course, they're still in the hunt on all three Cups, you know, the Under-18 League, the Premier League Cup and the FA U Cup as well, which is absolutely brilliant. And they have a big tie coming up in that FA U Cup on the weekend. And moving on to Egan Riley, he signs a new deal. We are delighted to announce that Roman Egan Riley has signed his first professional contract with the club. Manchester-born Roman 17 joined our academy from Man City last summer, going full-time as a first-year scholar. Oh, I didn't know that, which is very interesting. Another one that we seem to be taking from the Man City Academy. And when you look at some of the players that they've had to sell from that academy the last few years, hopefully these guys can come good. He is a tall central defender. He has spent, he was part of the young city squad that lifted the under 16 Premier League Cup last season. He has featured first in the under 18 Premier League and the under uh, 18 Premier League Cup so far this term. So I think. From all of us here at the Irish Hotspur, we wish these two guys the very best of luck. What I love about this is that they've started to do this sort of regularly where they're looking at players from other academies to come in here and help beef up our academy. You had Callum Logan, who I think was one of the guys that signed the new deal last week, the guy that we brought in from the Ipswich Academy. Um, and I, I'm all for it because it means then you have a higher percentage chance if, you've got, if you're gathering the best talent to be able to push the best talent into your first team. And hopefully we can stumble on a couple of gems because... Tottenham Academy down the years have produced some great players out of it, just haven't produced enough. So hopefully now by doing this, we can start producing a hell of a lot more. Now, moving on to the other bit of news that was circulating out there this week, and that is a possible loan move for Jude Sunsup Bell, who's having an absolute fantastic uh, season so far for the under-21s. And the report basically states Spurs are looking at potential loan moves for the attacker this month and an exposure to the first team football will go a long way to deciding whether he could yet break into Postacoglu's thinking or whether he will instead break through elsewhere. Now, with Sinsup Bell, it's an interesting one because he is sort of 
20 years of age. He is older than someone like Donnelly, but hasn't been sort of given that opportunity yet so far to sort of step up to the first team. And he's a very talented player. I've watched a lot of him for the under-21s, predominantly plays down the right-hand side. And when we signed him, he was more or less a striker. I think he's very, very tricky. He's got great end product. Um, and he's sort of in that grey sort of area, right, where he's probably too good for the under-21s, which he sort of numbers and stats sort of suggest this season. So far, 14 games for the under-21s this season, scoring nine goals and five or six assists as well. So he's on absolute fire. So for me, I think it's ideal that we do get him out on loan. I would I would say probably gather probably somewhere like League One, maybe the championship. And let's test him and let's see where he's sort of at in terms of senior football, what level he's at, where he's at, where he needs to develop. But for me, I think it's uh, he's, he's very, very promising. I really do like the kid. He works very hard out of possession as well. And I do think a low move will do him the world of good. Um, look, it would come as a blow to the under-21s who are absolutely flying this season. Um, you know, he's been a big part of that. They've already lost the likes of Jamie Donnelly and uh, Dorrington, who sort of, I think, will play uh, with, with between the seniors and the under-21s this season. Ashley Phillips, um, Josh Keeley. You know, uh, a lot of players that have, um, what's the other guy, Matthew Craig as well. A lot of guys that have been influential so far, sort of, either been sent out on loan and spend the majority of their time training with the, the senior team and stuff like that. So they are being decimated. But the good thing is, is that we're not holding, you know, other players have been able to step in for the under 21s and sort of not make that difference as felt. But these guys are supremely talented and they do deserve the opportunity to go and make a name for themselves. So I'm happy that we are looking after their development as well and that we actually have strategic plans for them. But the low move, you know, it does say breakthrough elsewhere. So will it be make or break for someone like Jude Sunsup Bell? Now, moving on to the academy games this week and the under-21s did have a game. They played Aston Villa in the Premier League too and they won 5-3 goals was a hat-trick from Will Lankshire. Interestingly, I read an article there the other day, and I didn't know this, but he used to be in the Arsenal Academy at one stage as well. Could he be the next Harry Kane? The joy continues his good form as well, uh, scoring a goal, and also Sun up Bell, bang one in as well. And basically, a little bit of a match summary for you. Will Lankshire here, a hat-trick as our under-21s twice came from behind to dismantle Aston Villa 5-3 and continue their perfect record in the Premier League 2 on Saturday afternoon. Despite twice falling behind in the first half, Lancashire got us level on both occasions on the 15th minute and the 53rd minute with strikes either side of the break. Lancashire's first goal of the afternoon where he sort of lobbed the goalkeeper from 16 yards after he was found by a Ajayi and his second Lancashire basically tucked away a chance from close range to once again draw us level. And then within two minutes of drawing level, we did take the lead for the first time in the game as pressure in the final third from Lancashire and Tyrese Hall, which he's actually done a hell of a lot this season. Uh, saw Hall actually come away with the ball before he fed a joy who cut inside his man in the box before unleashing an absolute cannonball of a strike that smashed the underside of the bar and went in on the 56th minute. And then Jude Sunsup Bell then put the game out of reach of Villa on the 67th minute, putting Spurs 4-2 ahead with a curling effort in the far corner. And after a Jai's superb cross-field switch of play, Lancashire then completed his hat-trick on 72 minutes and in some style, the forward spinning on the spot after receiving the ball in the box before rattling the ball into the far corner of the net with a clinical finish. So an all-out, a very sort of good day for the under-21s. And what I would also say is a very good test, right? I've alluded to the amount of players that they've already lost this season, you know, and they found themselves behind very, very quickly, but it was a good test of character, of, of, of talent as well. And these guys ended up pulling through and shining through and finding the answer, which now makes it 11 wins from 11 games in the Premier League too, and moving four points clear at the top. Um, so here is a look at the Premier League 2 table. As you can see there, four points ahead of West Ham with a game in hand as well. And all the green ticks as well, which we absolutely love to see. I don't see any reason, bar maybe a severe injury crisis, why we don't go on to win the Premier League 2 this season. I would also say a player to really look out for as well is someone like Tyrese Hall. You look at a lot of the injuries that we have to midfield, a lot of the discussions around someone like a Hoiberg and someone like an Ollie Skip. Tyrese Hall, for me, 
if we progress him right, could be our answer to Papa Matasar in terms of how hungry he is to get off the ball. I remember watching the cup final last year and pointing out to Jack, that kid's work rate will serve him well in the future. And so far this season, he's absolutely fitting the system perfectly. He's putting pressure on in the midfield, turning the ball over, and he's either scoring or players other in to score. He's been absolutely superb. And one player from the under-21s that I really would be looking out for uh, come the future. He's got a very bright future ahead of him, the young kid. Now, moving on to the under-18s. And they were also in action on the weekend as well against Brighton in the, in the uh, league as well. And it's interesting that under-18s league, it's switched between north and south. And I wonder, is that because they don't want these kids maybe having them long journeys? Some of them might have to travel the night before and stuff like that. Um, so it's split between north and south, whereas the Premier League too is all one big league where you have teams from the North and the South in it. But our under-18s conceded a late equaliser as Brighton and Hove Albion snatched a point at the American Express Elite Football Performance Centre on Saturday morning. Influential on the day, Mikey Moore cancelled out Brighton's opener three minutes before half-time, where Moore fired home a left-footed strike which sailed high into net after a slight deflection. After the interval took the lead for the first time as Mikey Moore's outswinging corner fell to Lahan, who produced an instinctive volley from close range to make it 2-1. Another guy who's really made the step up to the under-18s this season. He's been absolutely superb. But the home side never gave up and agonised. He struck five minutes from time in what was a bitter, bitter blow for our under-18 side. But promotion is still, or sorry, not promotion, but win the league is still on the cards for the under-18s, which I'll show you in a minute. But a player that really has a bright future ahead of him is Mikey Moore. We've done great work to tie him down to a new contract. There's rumours of like Borussia Dortmund, Real Madrid and clubs like that sniffing around him. We've tied him down to a new contract. Now, he has had a bit of an injury sort of uh, so far this season, but he has been absolutely superb in the games that he's played, always scoring, always assisting, and probably showing that he's better than under-18s. So potentially there could be a promotion in the near future if Sun Suk Bell goes out on loan. Maybe Mikey Moore might make the step up to the under-21s, which I'm very excited about. And also, young Ali Iro as well, very good as well, very good player, has had his injuries as well this season, along with Lahan, who's made a massive step up uh, for the under-18s this season. Chaplin has been instrumental in the back line as well. And uh, Logan, the guy we signed from Ipswich as well. But the under-18s are now behind West Ham. Well, level points, but we sit second uh, because of goal difference. Who have a game in hand on us. So we've a bit of work to do to sort of get back that top spot and chase West Ham down. But we are still on for the league in that game. And then that brings me on to what fixtures are coming up for the academy that we need to look out for if you guys are interested in keeping an eye on them. Well, the under-21s are in action tomorrow night, which I will be doing a watch-along for. So I do hope that all of you guys can join me for that. And um, We're playing in the Premier League Cup now. We are, it's, it's, it's a group stage uh, to get out of first before you get into the knockout rounds. And we've played four, we've won all four, sitting there at 12 points. The next team behind us only have six. So one win over these next two games. Um, as you can see, we double up then and we play again on Saturday against Peterborough United to finish out the group. One point out of these next two games, we are true. However, I suspect we will probably win both of them as well. We're absolutely flying in that regard. So that's what's coming up for the under-21s over the course of the next week. And then for the under-18s, as you can see, we are away to Southampton on the 3rd of February in the um, in the league. Um, and then, interestingly enough, for Saturday the 10th, there's two games uh, scheduled for that, which is very, very interesting. They have us playing Leicester City under-18s at half uh, half 11 in the morning, and then they have us playing the FAU Cup Saturday evening um, at 7 o'clock. Now, my bet is that Le that Leicester game has probably been postponed and moved. They just haven't done that yet on Google. But uh, I do think the FAU Cup game, a very tricky game against um, Bournemouth, but nevertheless, a game that we should win. We've got some top talent, so I'll definitely be uh, looking out for that and seeing if I can get a stream for that. And if I can't, Potentially, I might do a watch along. I might double up on them. Who knows? Because we are playing um, Everton. Uh, the senior team are playing Everton at half 12 on Saturday. So I might be able to fit the two of them in if I can find a link for it. So that's everything that you guys basically need to know about the academy. 
Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think the under-21s and the under-18s can achieve sort of domestic glory? And uh, how do we see it? then sort of filter that out into the senior team? But if they can start picking up the trophies and getting that taste of winning at that age, hopefully then they can bring that into the senior team when they step up. But hopefully we're winning by then. Also, guys, please let me know in the comment section what other sort of streams you would like to see me do. What other information do you guys want that I can provide for you? But please smash a like. Have a great day. So, guys, plenty more content coming your way uh, today. Stay tuned at one around 1 or 2 o'clock. I'll be dropping the uh, channel predictions for the match ahead of tomorrow. And then I'll also be back later on around quarter to 7 as the kickoff is at 7 o'clock as our under-21s take on Bristol in the Cup. Have a great day. As always, come on, you Spurs. In the mighty hands we trust, we never stop.